Here we have a new 2024 Ford Explorer. This one comes in the XLT trim level with rear wheel drive in agate black metallic. And then we do have the Ebony Slate ActiveX interior. For the powertrain, we do get a 2.3 liter eco boosted four cylinder engine that's made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission. And first impressions of the 24 compared to the 23, no big changes here. As we come around to the front end, we do get the LED headlamps, LED daytime running lights and LED fog lights. Nice look there and the lights don't flash like that. That's just how my camera's picking them up. But love the overall look of this one, especially with this one having the XLT appearance package, which includes these 20 inch aluminum wheels. And we do get passive keyless entry, power door lock controls, power windows, power mirrors, rear window lock. Headlamp controls are here and the lift gate control is there. Nothing in there. And then hit that twice to open the hood. We do get a manual tilt and telescoping steering wheel. And here's our power driver seat, two-way power lumbar support. Now I do have the seat adjusted for someone of my size being 6'3 with longer legs, my driving position. So we're gonna check out the rear seat room. And a big shout out to Ford Lincoln of Franklin for allowing me to review this Explorer today. I'll leave a link below in the description. But back here, seat back pockets on both sides. Rear AC controls are there and we do have two USB-C charge ports and then a 12 volt there. Look at the front. This one does come with a power sunroof there, panoramic. Just a quick look in the back there. I'm not gonna try and squeeze myself back there, but you can see the leg room there. But pretty good space back here overall. Now over here, easy fuel. As we come around to the back end, we do get the LED tail lamps as well. A dual exhaust. And then to pop the lift gate, just have to find the button just over there. While that's going up, there's a quick look underneath the vehicle if you're curious. And then this one's filled with floor mats and such. So that's how it looks like with the third seat up. And then you can just pull here, fold that flat, and then you can see all this additional space I have when that's up compared to when it's down. And then a quick look underneath the mats here. Additional storage right in there. So we're gonna close that up. And we're gonna come around to the rear passenger side and excuse the pollen on this, it's just spring has hit early this year. So if the vehicle looks dirty, that's why. But pretty easy to just fold that up or fold that down, excuse me, and then pretty easy to just put it back up. And you can adjust moving it back or forth with that bar underneath. Gonna just take a quick look at the window sticker. You all can pause anywhere you need to to take a closer look. I'm just gonna go over all the standard features relatively quickly, and then I'm gonna come over here and give a little bit more time for the equipment that is included here. So that twin panel moonroof is 1700. The Copilot 360 with the adaptive cruise is 995 and the XLT Sport appearance package is 1995. Those are the biggest options there, but still get you at an MSRP under 50,000. And then front passenger seat, I love that we get power with two-way power lumbar support here as well. Lockable glove compartment, pretty decent size, small side pocket there. And then where we had the hood popped, we're gonna come back around and just take a quick look in the engine bay. And there it is there. But let's go ahead and hop in the driver's seat. We're gonna start it up. Before we do that, leather wrap steering wheel here. Feels very nice. There's the horn there. And there was the start. Now to the radio, we do get AM, FM, XM along with Bluetooth, and then we get that wireless CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. Navigation systems here, just search, pretty easy to set up your home, work, or you can just enter an address in however you see fit. 
And then here we can go through our settings. So vehicle settings are right in here. Driver assistance settings are there. You can set the cruise and all of that. And then your general settings go in here. You can change your units of measurement, your language, etc. Backup cameras there, guidelines follow you. You turn the steering wheel, and then over here you can see how close you're getting to an object behind you with a rear park assist. Hazards, volume, click there to mute. And then you can adjust back. Tune knob is here. And then we get three stage heated front seats for the driver and front passenger, as well as the heated steering wheel here. And then dual zone automatic climate controls. So we can adjust fan speed and all of that temperature. And then back here we have a USB-C, USB-A port, 12 volt, little storage here throughout. Then we can shut all that away. And then for the shifter, hit the brake, reverse, neutral drive. Then your limiter is there. And you have your electronic parking brake, pull up to engage, hit the brake, press down and disengage. Automatic brake hold is here. So if you're at a stoplight or something, you can turn that on. When you come to a stop, you can let off the brake and then it'll go ahead and let you sit there till you give it throttle when the light turns green. Traction control toggle, auto stop toggle, and then you can go through your drive modes here and it'll show you what mode you're in right there in the center stack or the center console, or I'm sorry, the digital gauge cluster there in the middle. So eco, sport, normal, all of that there. And then in the center console cubby space here, there's a 12 volt, decent space in there, I think. And then up here, sunglasses holder, I'm gonna push that sunshade back and then the controls are here there are the lights you have to hit it twice to open it all the way and then you can either vent it or you can go ahead and slide the roof back so we're going to see how far it goes so that's one touch there and there's two pretty impressive let's look at the back seat from up here as we come back around Very impressed with the vanity mirrors. We have the nice LED lights there. And then back to the steering wheel, blinkers. We can toggle our lane keeping system here. And then we have our intermittent wipers, one time off, intermittent low high. We can adjust that intermittent frequency in the middle. And then we can just use our rear wiper as well on the side and then push back for that rear wiper fluid, pull up for the front. And we do get that Copilot 360, so we can toggle the adaptive cruise there, adjust the gap there, lane centering. We can turn that on or off, and then we can cancel the whole system there, adjust speed, volume, mute. And then over here, we can go through the center stack there in the middle. And then we can go through the menu, use this to go through your track list, radio station presets, voice recognition. These are also Bluetooth buttons as well. So all that's pretty self-explanatory for the most part. Push button starts here. Here's the key fob with remote start. And next, let's go ahead and take this 2024 Explorer XLT rear wheel drive out on the road for a test drive. So starting the test drive in the 24 Explorer XLT, the 2.3 EcoBoost, it has some pull to it. It's certainly not the, the ST but it does have pretty good acceleration, especially for this, I guess, more basic engine that still gets you 21 miles per gallon city, 28 highway. So to have something that gets up like this does with that kind of fuel economy is impressive. Now the overall driving dynamics so far, what you'd expect from an SUV of this caliber, the seat decent in terms of just the overall durability of it and just how it holds me up a little too plush for me but it might be because i have this bigger jacket on but i would like a seat that hugs just a tad bit more but i'm used to driving a mach -E, so that might be part of what's going on here but very quiet in the cabin of course i'm not giving it much throttle but Road noise around 35 is minimal. Now that I'm coming downhill here, it did want to downshift. And with it having the 10 speed, 
it does like to ship quite a bit and that could be good or bad depending on what you're trying to do and I will say with these bigger 20s I can feel the road a bit more than I'm used to feeling with the 18 inch wheels but I think it's worth it just for the overall looks having those wheels makes a, a big difference give a little pull coming out of this corner here and I'm gonna put in a sport and give it one getting on the interstate here in a minute so definitely definitely peppy and we'll give it one more slight pull getting on the interstate here So especially just under mild throttle, very impressive. We're gonna test out the co-pilot system here. So I have lane centering adaptive cruise, gonna put it into eco mode. Yeah, cabin acoustics in here are pretty good. Even on this rougher stretch of the interstate. But I think this is a pretty good competitor for the Toyota Highlander, Honda Pilot, and of course Chevy's Traverse. And I just think Ford's a little ahead of the game before everybody's redesigns come out, but just an impressive SUV for the money and definitely has good power. But this will bring me to the end of my review of this 2024 Ford Explorer XLT.